Hey everybody, it's Jeremy. Welcome back to EA Tetragrammaton, where we are playing Ur. This is turn 24. Let's jump into things. Alright, so we actually have a whole bunch... Well, it looks like we have a whole bunch of stuff going on, but uh, really there's not that much. So, we've got... Apupa, the Raktapada, has claimed the throne of Earth in the name of Devil in the Detail. So this is Lanka claiming the throne to the southeast of us, which is the throne of Earth, I believe. We'll double check that just to make sure. We did a bunch of site searching this turn and only found one site with our Ishib in Sinkhole Swap, which is actually an enchanted glacier. Um, and we'll talk about this here in just a second. This is kind of interesting. Not crazy interesting, but kind of interesting. Um, and then, of course, the big thing for this turn, right? We've got a battle in Agartha, so let's check things out. Got our combined forces, um, about 12 to 14 Mushushus, I believe, something around in there. Maybe not quite that many. Um, a mix of around 60-ish different infantry is Enkidu Warrior, or Enkidu's Chosen, Urgards, Warriors, etc., We've got two galas set for two swarm castings, potentially. We've got five air gudus set for lightning bolt spam. And then we've got two NCs and Vasanapada at the ready. We are raid against. Oof, holy shit. So a decently sized force of great ohms. I believe this is. 15, right? Um, a bunch of Pale One Warriors, a chunk of Pale Ones. There are some Cavern Guard out here in front. And a bunch of Ancient Stone Hurlers. This is mostly Province Defense. This is actually a crap ton of Province Defense. And we've got some Earth Readers mixed in. So we've got Sandstone, Gym Breaker, and Sand Mind Earth Readers. And these guys all have some pretty nice paths for buffing if you have the research for it, which I don't think he does. Um, but this is actually a fairly large force, so let's watch this go down. So our, our guys run forward because we do not want to stand back and take... There's only 15 Mind Blasters in this, right? But they're still Mind Blasters. They're still... We can already see they're taking out chunks of our army. We do not want to give them time to continue that. Uh, the Swarm comes out of our Galas. We saw the Lightning Bolts come down already as well. Another round there. Now we're getting um, Sermons of courage coming out and and as we can kind of see right the earth readers he clearly doesn't have much in the way of research the earth readers are already defaulting to or if he does right he's just not scripting things the earth readers are already um defaulting to flying shards which is whatever uh so our Mushushus are coming in on a line. They are unfortunately kind of getting picked out by the Great Ohms, but there are enough of them that are hitting this flank that they are going to be able to slaughter things. I actually got a little worried right here for this particular Mushushu, um, but we get kind of lucky because some of these swarms and infantry kind of come down and take some of the heat off of him, and then the others swarm past. He is able to kind of tank for a little while, um, and now the battle's kind of in this weird, odd line with Mushushus in the back line, and that's basically going to be it. Because without buffs and without a large enough mind blasting core, Agartha is unable to carry the day. Now we do take some losses here, um, but fortunately we actually do not take that many losses. We took 21 total. We lost seven Inkies chosen, three of our Inkidus, one 
uh, horn blower, the one horn blower that we had. We lost four light infantries and we lost six Urgar gar guards. We lost no Mushushus, which is great. We lost none of our casters, which is great. And we retained the majority of our forces. 21 out of 91, still a chunk, but I'll, I'll take a quarter loss looking at what we were up against. This was 148 out of his province defense. He he was dumping money into this. So my assumption is, is he was probably using all of the money that he could to produce great alms and other things. And once he either ran out of resources or recruitment points, it seemed like he was likely just dumping that into the province defense of Agartha to make it as challenging as possible to take province. Which it was. Like, um, honestly, if he'd had another 15 Great Olms, I think he probably would have won. Or if he'd had if he'd had legitimate buffs uh, to cast for his Earth Readers, he might have been able to win. This was uh, not a foregone conclusion. Just kind of scary. So, that being said, battle for Agartha is won. We still need to besiege the... The province and sack the fort however there shouldn't be much that he can do going forward fingers crossed it nice watch him have like a monolith or something like that that shows up and then we just can't kill it oh my mind all right an unexpected event has occurred in the wood of many paths a few nature gems have been found in the split trunk of an oak five nature gems nice uh, and then we had the arena battle, but only only two people participated. Because who wants to participate? Like, again, it's Yomi and Hinnom. Who wants to go up against that? So I, I want to say, didn't we already... I'm pretty sure we already had an arena battle in this game. Um, and Yomi and Hinnom were the ones to actually go in. And um, Hinnom won. Yomi lost. I might be thinking of a different game. But regardless, right? Who wants to go up against Hinnom or Yomi? Uh, Kailasa sent someone in just as kind of like a in case. But it's a Bandar commander versus... Oh, uh, yeah. It's the Melkart with the freaking lifelong protection. I remember. I remember. Yeah. What are you going to do against this guy? Look at him. Coral Blade, Dragon Helmet, Bracer of Protection, Chi Boots... This guy's a monstroil. Twist fate, body ethereal. Wow. Blessing. Reinvigoration, magic three, blood surge. Actually surprising how minor of a bless this is. But it doesn't matter. Still quite a good bless. For what he's going for. And then he mind burns him down. He doesn't even like attack him. He just mind burns him down. Hilarious. Alright so easy win for Hinnom. And what does he get? He gets the Forbidden Light. And this is. Ew, this is a big deal. Actually. Um, forbidden Light I want to say is. Is a path booster. Double check real quick. It is. I can't type. The Forbidden Light. The crazy path booster too. This is this is insanity. This is this is probably one of the strongest items in the game. Um as far as like path boosting goes. It's plus two fire and plus two astral on a miscellaneous slot. And it generates one fire gem per turn. But it has a horror mark chance of 50%, and it it gives you advanced aging. It also casts Solar Brilliance at the start of the combat. So, um, whoever you put it on is basically gonna get horror marked, and they're gonna get horror marked quickly. But that's an immense, like... Just thinking from his perspective, right? So this guy is... He could be an Astral 4 right now. Instantly. Like, nothing else Astral 4. 
Uh, that's a, that would be a bad setup. But there, I think actually there are. Uh, we'll double check, but I think you can get mail carts with fire, fire and astral. So you could probably do that and just go crazy. Anyways, that's a really that's a really good pickup for him. That's very scary. Um, so we've just started started to destroy the fort in Agartha. Uh, the walls are severely damaged. It'll take us another turn to break them down completely, but that's okay. Uh, let's check that real quick. Pretenders. Yeah, pretenders. Pretenders. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Oh, I was wrong too. I think. Lock Ball. Melkart. Yeah, Melkarts can't get... Oh, they can't get Fire and Astral. Okay, so I guess that's kind of like the, the flip side. And Baals can, in theory, get Fire and Astral, but that's going to be very rare. So, maybe not as good as it could be. Oh, what am I talking about? Even, even if he can't, even if he has difficulty putting it on one person and making use of it with both paths on one person, it's still a plus two booster for Fire or Astral. That's still going to be good. He's still going to really make you... We appreciate and make use of that item, I'm assuming. What else were we going to... We were going to look at the, this. We were going to confirm the Throne of Earth. So the Throne of Earth is... Yes, it's this one. So, Lanka has just taken the Throne of Earth, which gives them Dominion 2, Reinvigoration, two Earth Gems, a Gnome, or Gnome Recruitment, and Earth Ritual. So that's cool. So that's this one down here. So, um, that narrows what we have as far as options go for this, which we would love the golden. We'd love, actually, a couple of these. Um... This would actually be fine for us. Anyways, sorry, I'm thinking about random things. What are we doing this turn? We've got some stuff going on. Um, uh, kind of. Uh, the the big battle is over. Uh, the big struggle right now that we've been facing is over. Now it's time to start consolidating and growing. Okay, so we are still sieging um, Agartha, but we're doing so in a more controlled manner. We have consolidated our forces onto NC one. Um, shouldn't be any big issue there um nc2 is actually heading to perenna with the intent of heading to ur sooner rather than later um because nc3 is about to pop out next turn and lead an army down south to rim mountains i want nc2 at the ready to pick up another army should we need to uh respond in any direction basically so uh, we're sieging here in Agartha with the remaining forces. G Gudu 2 is actually going to pop over to Bell and start site searching um, around this whole area. Again, we have zero air income. We really need some air income, even if it is a minor pittance. We need some fucking air income. It's got to happen. Uh, so sooner, sooner rather than later, hopefully. Uh, speaking of which, we are also site searching down here in White Peaks. Um, okay, so what else are we doing? We're building a temple in Perenna with uh, Voodoo 4. Um, and to talk about this enchanted glacier. So we've got a water gem producer here, but a water mage may enter to summon a yeti. So yetis are cool. Um, they are these big, hulking, uh, like 46 hit point, 20 something strength brutes um, that are decently fun to play with if you can buff them ur is a pretty good buff nation right with nature and earth ur is a pretty good buff nation so this is actually kind of a fun thing for us to get and um ur is a fun nature earth buff nation that also has easy access to water so we're going to be able to make use of this very easily so we're gonna head down and put a mage what i've decided to do is i've decided to go ahead and put yit ogta down here um but to kind of like get the get the process started sooner rather than later i'm sending salme 2 down here to do it for now um 
In the meantime, we're kind of bouncing people around for different site searching. Ishib is held heading over to the Gladewood. Um, we've got Elder Six is heading up to Kun Aral in order to eventually head to the Fever Fens, right, and start boosting the province defense there. Nazar the second unfortunately found nothing here in the Fever Fens, which is very unlucky. But we're going to head him down to the Glade Woods and search there, and probably Sinkhole Swamp, and then these two locations. So that's kind of the idea there. Um, what else, what else, what else? We are finishing recruitment on this NC, getting more military here. We are recruiting another Gudu here, and a very small amount of military as well. Um, we have very few units here, 12 units that are going to join, probably not next turn, but a turn after, right? Uh, NC3 will go here, and then when he attacks here, this, whoever I need to bring these guys over will come down to Rim Mountains as well. That should be fine. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, honestly, building the temple took the majority of our money. Most of the focus is popping Agartha, which should be popped next turn. Who will be able to attack next turn. Um, and hopefully after that, we'll have Agartha. We'll build a temple in it ASAP, get our dominion all the way up in here, take these two provinces if at all possible, and look towards the future. Um, we've got some options on the, the horizon. I have kind of fallen off on the diplomacy with some of my neighbors. I need to get back on that. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, another thing that we're going to want to do in the near future is kind of a barrage of scouts. We have a bit of scouting out, something that allows us to kind of see the immediate effects around our borders. But I really want to get some more scouts going. I even want to get some scouts into the water so we can kind of keep eyes on on um, Relay. Uh, and go from there. So a couple of a couple of plans. Temple here. About going to be done with the Palisades there in three months. Should have Agartha in two months. Build a temple there. Um, that should be a nice source of income. We're going to focus on research. After we hit Alteration 5... Probably going to do Construction 2, and then probably a run-up Conjuration real quick. Um, I say real quick. We might run up Conjuration pretty far, actually. Um, I could conceivably see us going very far up Conjuration. Or we might just go up Conjuration to uh, Kusarakus, or probably more likely to level 5 for Ugalus, and Howl, and things like that. And then turn around and start running up enchantment for Earthblood Deepwell. I do, I am kind of entertaining the idea of going Thaumaturgy for a little bit because we have um, access to these Crystal Sorceresses, which I want to get temples on Crystal Sorceresses and on the Shamans. Um, we've got, hopefully, we're going to be able to hit a point where we can consolidate and grow for a little bit i think we are kind of behind the curve maybe not on all of our neighbors right i think Fomoria got um got curbed as far as their expansion goes so they're actually kind of small right now i think yomi has kind of gotten curbed as far as their expansion goes i think kailasa and and gia penji is obviously huge and kailasa has gotten a little bit bigger than normal off the back of um, Pangea and Tirnanog's War. And I have almost no information on Mictlin and Hinnom and Lanka. So. And someone else. Who who else is there? Tenders. Uh, Saramacia. So yeah, I I haven't even seen Saramacia. So I wanna get I wanna get scouts out and see what we can kind of see as far as uh, the progress of the world. So, that's kind of the current plan. Should be good. Fingers crossed. I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.